It's me, Bricky Brick, and look where I am. I'm with the Port Angeles Fire Department, and today we get to learn about fire trucks. I'm super excited. Come on, let's go. Some of these, okay? Wow, check this one out. 
<gasps> in this compartment, we have a chainsaw and some cords. We have different power tools in here so you can get anything down if it's something's in your way. Let's check this one out. Oh, check this out. This is a giant saw blade, and this one's for cutting down a bunch of different metal. You never know what kind of situation you're gonna be coming up on as a firefighter. Whoa, this is a big compartment. Check it out, these right here are chalk blocks and they are, can be wedged in different locations to level out different things. Wow, check this out. This right here has hoses, pumps, and nozzles. Oh my goodness, these can attach to a bunch of different lengths and widths of hoses. Look at this, you pull it up. You ready to hose down a fire, that's pretty cool. Look at the size of this hose. That can let out a lot of water really quickly. That's incredible. Well, check out this panel of gauges and pressure valves. This is really cool. So these right here, they're all color coordinated and they release the water out of these different areas. So this red comes out right here. You can attach a hose to this. Orange comes out on the other side. Do you want to go take a look? <laughs> Check it out. Here it is. It's orange. That comes out of the, the passenger side. And lastly, this blue one comes out right here. This is color coordinated so that the firefighters don't make a mistake and they can remember which ones they've released and which ones they haven't. Isn't that so awesome? Wow, you see all these hoses right here? They're all folded really nicely so that a firefighter can rip it out as fast as they can and attach it to the pump they need to. And look at over here. This is an electrical box so that they can plug in any power tools. That's really awesome. Now we're on the other side of the truck. You wanna check this compartment out? Whoa, check it out. There's a bunch of ropes and harnesses in here. So if they're on top of a big building and they need to repel down, they can harness up. You remember like when I was rock climbing? Isn't that so cool? They really are prepared for anything. Whoa, check out these big tools. We've got three different axes, some bolt cutters to cut some locks off doors or anything they need to. We've got this big pry bar so you can pry open a door or lift something up. Oh man, and look, there's even more back here. Whoa, we've got a shovel right here, a sledgehammer, some bigger bolt cutters. Oh boy, these tools are so huge and incredible. stretcher and if someone's really injured and they're not responding they can lay them down on that and carry them out of the building or to safety whoa well before we check out the cab i kind of want to get dressed up like a firefighter that way i can feel like a real life hero come on let's go get a suit on You can see that this material is really thick and it's fire resistant. Isn't that awesome? Well, I think it's time we try on one of these big suits. So the first thing you do is you slip your feet into the boots.
but you gotta be super strong. We're gonna do some push-ups just to make sure we're in tip-top shape. Are you ready, guys? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's count out loud to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Check out the inside of that big fire truck now. Come on. Hey, check it out. This is my friend Adam. Hi, guys. He's a real life firefighter. Wow. We were just coming over here to check out the inside of this cab. Is that all right with you? Yeah, go ahead. Whoa. Wow. Check this out. How many firefighters can this engine hold? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh man, and check this out. We've got some headsets back here so you can put those on and listen to everyone talking in the cab. We've got some big, huge flashlights. That's awesome. What's this, Adam? That's a thermal imaging camera. It can sense what heat it is. Oh wow, so if someone's in a building, you could kind of look and see where they are, huh? Exactly, you can see where the fire and where the people are, that's... even if it's dark. Whoa, that's really cool. Whoa, check this out. This is where the driver sits to drive this big thing. And that seat over there, that passenger seat, that's where the officer sits. And he's kind of in charge of this whole operation, telling everybody what they're gonna do and where the plan is. That's really awesome. Wow, check out all these buttons. We've got a radio right here, some more buttons and all these gauges. Wow, it takes a lot to operate this big ladder, Chuck. I have so many questions. Wow, Adam, so how long have you been a firefighter? In total, I've been a firefighter for three years. Wow, that's really cool. What does it take to become a firefighter? Lots of training and lots of studying. And oh, a lot of boy. hard work. Oh, man, it looks like it. So, Adam, how long is this fire engine? It's 53 feet. Whoa, that's really long. And does it hold water? No, we have to hook up a fire hydrant right here to get water. Oh boy, so does every fire truck not hold water or do some fire trucks hold water? Just a couple, like the one behind you, that one holds 500 gallons. Wow, 500 gallons, that is a lot of water. But this ladder truck, it doesn't hold water. So we're gonna hook up a, this ladder truck to a fire hydrant and see what it takes to get this thing pushing water out to a fire. Doesn't that sound exciting? Come on, let's go.
truck. Isn't that awesome? Wow, so this hydrant right here, it releases 2,800 gallons per minute. That is a lot of water. Wow, so now that we've got that hose out, we've got to fold it back up properly and put it back for the next trip. And Cameron's gonna help us do that. So the first thing you gotta do is straighten it out so there's no kinks in it. if they've got an injury. Isn't that cool? Well, let's keep exploring. <laughs> Check this one out. Oh boy, this right here is a stair chair. This is used to transport patients down super steep stairs if there's no way around them. Isn't that cool? Oh, there's another compartment over here. Ambulances have so many different awesome compartments that are full of really helpful tools. It's like a hospital on wheels. Isn't that awesome? Oh, look at these. These are a bunch of big boards that help support a body when you're laying them down. That's pretty cool. And this right here, this is an O2 tank. O2 is another word for oxygen. So if you come up on an emergency and someone's not breathing very well, you can hook them up to that and give them oxygen. Isn't that so cool? Are you ready to take a look inside the cab? Well, first, I want to introduce you to one of my friends. This is my friend, Matt. Hey. He's an 
EMT? Matt, what is an EMT? Well, Breck, an EMT is an emergency medical technician. We provide basic life support for kiddos and adults. Wow, that's really cool. Well, I was wondering if we could take a look inside of this ambulance cab. Of course, let's go. Wow, check out the inside of this cab. There are so many different buttons here. Matt, what are these buttons used for? Well, th these buttons here will turn on the back where you have light in the back of the ambulance. Mm. And then also there's buttons that turn on the lights outside so that cars will move out of our way when we're driving down the road. Up here is the radio where we talk to uh, dispatch. Oh, okay. So what does dispatch tell you? Uh, they tell us where to go on a call and they give us updates on the calls as well. Oh, wow. That sounds really important. Better make sure that radio's working, huh? Got Wait a minute, listen. Uh, Jesse, stop that for me right there, uncle Teddy? That might be my Uncle Teddy. We better get going. Let's go. I'll grab the gurney. Okay, I'm gonna go check on the patient. Oh boy, Uncle Teddy, are you okay? Oh man, hey Matt, we're gonna need the backboard. We're gonna get you into the ambulance and check you out, okay buddy? Everything's gonna be fine. Oh boy. Well, we gotta take a look at him inside the ambulance. On you, Brecky Breck. One, two, three. Everything's gonna be okay, Uncle Teddy. We're gonna check you out. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is buckle him in so he doesn't go anywhere. I want to make sure he's safe for transport. Yeah, Brecky Breck, do you want to see how we load the patient up into the truck? I would love to. All right, so right down here, you gotta get the brake up done. Oh, okay, so we've got a red brake so it doesn't roll away. And then the plus button goes out. Whoa, look at that. Do you see these buttons right here? All right, pressing this button will raise it up. Pressing this button will lower it down. Oh, okay. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Wow, then you gotta get it lined up perfectly and this will click green. Oh, now it's locked in there. And the minus button works to raise it up like that. Oh, cool, that's super smooth. Wow, well let's check out the inside of this ambulance while we assess Uncle Teddy. Wow, have you ever been inside of an ambulance before? I haven't. This is really awesome, Matt. Yeah. So what's the first thing we do when we get a patient in here, Matt? Well, we check his vitals to make sure he's doing okay. Oh, okay. So what is this machine right here, Matt? So this is a Zoll monitor. We're able to check their heart rate, their SpO2 level, their blood pressure. We're able wow. to check all their vitals. Wow, so you can check how their heart's doing, how their blood's flowing. There's a lot of different parts in a body that you can monitor. That's really cool. Wow, this right here is called a blood pressure cuff, and we're gonna check his blood pressure and make sure he's doing okay. All right. Oh, he presses that button and this is gonna fill up with air. Wow, Uncle Teddy, it looks like you're doing all right. That's good news. Well, it looks like Uncle Teddy experienced a big fall. I think he fall fell out of that tree over there. Oh boy, Uncle Teddy. Well, I'm really thankful that Matt and all the medics on site can help out and help a patient when they're in need. That's pretty cool. So right now, we're gonna hook up this BVM to Uncle Teddy. Wow, do you see this over there? This is oxygen. Did you see that big tank that I showed you in the back of the truck? Well, that supplies this with oxygen. Well, Brecky Breck, we'd put this over their nose and their mouth, and we'd squeeze this once every five to six seconds. Oh, he's doing it nice and slow. Wow, that's pretty cool. How are you doing, Uncle Teddy? Everything okay, bud? Oh boy, it would be scary to fall off a big tall tree like that. I'm glad you're okay. 
Well, looks like he's doing better. Good job, Uncle Teddy. Well, since we're in here, Matt, can we take a look at the inside of this ambulance? Yeah, of course. Well, the first thing I notice is there are a lot of seats and seatbelts in here. What are all of them used for? Well, they're for different people to sit on these bench seats here. And wow. then this is the captain's seat. So how many people usually come along in an ambulance like this? Well, there's a driver, there's a medic, and an EMT in the back. Wow, so at least three. Well, I don't think Uncle Teddy needs to go to the hospital today. He's doing all right. But I'm so thankful that Matt and his crew are able and willing to help save the day when there's an emergency. And it's really nice to get a tour of this ambulance so I know that we don't have to be scared about medical professionals and all of their help. It's actually really exciting to know that people are prepared to save the day. Wow, well thank you so much for coming along. Let's go Uncle Teddy. Uncle Teddy, I sure am glad you're safe from falling out of that tree. I'm sure that was really scary. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for taking great care of my teddy bear and showing me all that you know in this ambulance. No problem. Glad to help. Well, well, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hey, it's me, Brecky Wreck. And look at this. This right here is a police car. It's brand new. And we're with the Port Angeles Police Department. We're gonna learn about this police car. We're even gonna get to meet a canine officer. Isn't that so cool? Well, I'm really excited. Come on, let's get started. We've all heard of superheroes who wear capes and fly. But I've got heroes in my hometown. Sometimes I see them drive by. Hey, look at all these different police cars. Oh boy, they may not look like police cars, but that means they're undercover. They're kind of police cars in disguise. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? Well, look over here. There's a police truck, too. Wow, check that out. Isn't that cool? A police truck? Oh boy. Check out the outside of this big police car. We've got all these lights to flash and shine so that you can see what you're looking at. We've got these big, thick, heavy-duty tires. And check this out. This is a big bumper. You can run right into something and it won't affect the front of the vehicle. Isn't that so cool? Wow, and check this out. These two are the sirens. They make a really loud noise. Wow, well, before we take a tour of this police car, I want to introduce you to one of my friends. This is Officer Van Dusen. Hey, guys. Wow, so officer, this is your police car, huh? Yeah. Wow, do you mind if we take a look at the inside of it? Absolutely. All right. Whoa, check it out. There's a lot going on in there. So what is all this? Well, that right there is my computer. That tells me everywhere that I need to go and what call that I need to go to. And of course, my keyboard right next to it. And then right below that, this is how I talk to dispatch when I need to tell them where I'm at and where I'm going and that attaches to my radio and that's how I hear when dispatch is talking to me. And then this panel right down here, that's what turns on all of my lights and my sirens. That's pretty awesome. Do you mind if we take a look at the back seat? Yeah, let's do it. Whoa, check this out. It doesn't look very comfortable, does it? Well, you know why? It's because if you haven't made very good decisions and you kind of need to have a little talking to, then you can sit back here and look at this. The officer can unbuckle from right here instead of it being all the way over here and buckle you up right here. Look at this. This is a safe place. It's padded and protected. It's a good spot to calm down. Isn't that cool? Well, you know what? I know someone that might be willing to demonstrate putting on some handcuffs. Do you want to see that in action? All right, I'm going to go get my friend Uncle Teddy. <laughs> hey, Uncle Teddy, do you want to demonstrate what it's like to put on handcuffs? It kind of sounds fun. Oh, sure, Brecky Break, that does sound like a lot of fun. Okay, all right, so what we would do is gently put your hands behind your back. Okay, I'm going to put these on nice and loose so they don't hurt or anything, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, there's one. All Whoa, right. check it out, Uncle Teddy, is that cool? Wow, he's never worn real handcuffs before. All right, well, do you want to ride in the back of the police car? That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, wow, check it out. That looks like so much fun. And for safety, we gotta buckle you up. Oh man, police cars aren't scary at all. I'm so thankful that we have officers all over to help protect us. That's really cool. 
Well, do you mind if we go for a little ride? Yeah, let's go. Teddy and see what he thought. Wow, Uncle Teddy, what did you think of that? That was a lot of fun, Brookie Brook. I know, I thought so too. Oh boy, well, that was kind of fun to see you try on actual police cuffs. They're kind of heavy duty. Are you ready to take them off? Yeah, sure, Brookie Brook. <laughs> All right. Wow, check out that special key. Wow, that was a lot of fun learning about this police car. Do you guys want to go meet a canine officer? Oh, that would be awesome. Wow, we get to meet a real canine officer dog. That's pretty cool. Oh my goodness. This is my friend Officer Fairbanks right here. Hi. Hi. So, she has a dog named Copper. Check him out. Wow. We're getting them all geared up because we're going to do a little bit of training with Copper. Isn't that exciting? Oh boy, he sure is a beautiful dog. Look at him, he's getting excited. He loves to be a working dog. <laughs> wow, look at him. I have a couple questions, Officer Fairbanks. Yeah. Can anybody just pet your German Shepherd? No, so since he's a working dog, we gotta make sure that you ask the person or the handler if you can pet them first. Okay, and especially if he has his vest on. That means that he's at work and he needs to pay attention. That's pretty cool. How old is Copper? So Copper's four years old. Wow, look at him. He's a German Shepherd. He's big. <laughs> so we're in the atrium right now and we're gonna do a couple exercises with Copper just to see if he's good and ready for his training. Uh, we're gonna do some bite work, okay. which is handler protection. So Copper's trained to protect me if a bad guy tries to hurt him. So oh. in this scenario, Officer Van Dusen is gonna be the bad guy and Copper is trying to go bite his arm. Oh, okay. Wow, did you see that? He just went right for his arm. That would be really awesome to have a super protective dog if there was a bad guy trying to hurt you. Wow, good job, Copper. No touch. Whoa, did you see that? She called him back before he even attacked. That's a lot of self-control for that dog. Wow, good job, Copper. Officer Van Dusen, did it hurt when he bit your arm? Nope, it didn't hurt because I've got this sleeve to protect me. Whoa, check out that sleeve. That's really intense. Oh boy, this is really cool getting to see a canine in action. Oh boy, Copper, you sure are a strong dog. <laughs> how long did it take him to learn how to do all these cool commands? So when he came to me, he had no training mm. and all he knew how to do was to grab onto a sleeve. And so it takes about 400 hours of training in order for him to be certified. Wow, that is a very long time, but he is a very obedient dog. And it's really important that we have well-trained canines to help these officers. So are there any treats or rewards that Copper gets during the training process? Yeah, so in the beginning, we used a lot of treats. And when we were training tracking, he was following pieces of hot dogs. Oh boy, that'd be silly. Of course he wants to eat a hot dog. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So now that he's gotten older, he has his tug. That oh. That is all he wants to work for. Wow, <laughs> he's attached to a toy. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that was a lot of fun learning about Copper the Canine. And thank you so much, Officer Fairbanks, for teaching me what you know. I really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Wow, this was so much fun learning about police cars. Thank you so much, Officer Van Dusen, for teaching me what you know. Yeah, not a problem. And it was a lot of fun learning about canine officers, too. Well, thank you so much, Port Angeles Police Department. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. We've all heard of superheroes who wear capes and fly. But I've got heroes in my hometown. Sometimes I see them drive by in a big red truck. A police car for keeping us safe and giving us 
on a books and bike tour all over the United States. We're going to have story times at local libraries where I'll read a couple of my favorite books. We'll make a fun craft and even have time for a little dance party. We're also hosting bike events you can attend at local BMX tracks. You can show up with or without a bike. I'll bring some extra bikes and helmets for those that don't have one. And we'll get to explore and ride around the track together. And while I'm in your city, I'm going to film something amazing. Whether it's a cool museum, park, restaurant, or an awesome machine with wheels, I want to learn about it and all the things that make your city unique. And thanks to all of our amazing sponsors, these events are all absolutely free. Isn't that so cool? Oh boy, I hope to meet you on the road.